Are you tired of the same Not this shit again. Are you tired of hot takes, arguments, and questions that are just completely off This motherfucker didn't put the cord in. Something for you. Touchdowns and tangents. Of the people, for the people, by people, who care about the culture and all well, the we got the most important core. Trifling. Hopefully the mic is working. Looks like it is. Go to State Warriors! Fuck Boston! Fuck Boston. Fuck Boston. Boston. Fuck. Boston. Anyways, man, uh, shout out to us for actually uh, making it to our spot, even though we're like 15 minutes late. But yeah, uh, last week we had a bunch of different issues, so we had to punt the episode, but... Life whooped our ass. A lot of shit to catch up on this week in the NFL world, but with that, uh, I'm P.D. Camarillo, and he's... Kim's Frank James Berry. And we are Touchdowns and Tangents, your Thursday night spot for NFL takes, topical tangents, and overall concise commentary for the culture. Uh, if you fuck with us, go to touchdownsandtangents.com, TDs underscore tangents. You can also catch us on our affiliates, FBC Radio, X Squad Affiliates. And yeah, your favorite podcast up. Otherwise, man, what's. What's what's what are we talking about first? We back up this week, man. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about Ooh. it. Golden State won. The Lakers need to trade LeBron. Um just don't I'm tired of seeing him as a Laker. He's just killing the franchise. He's like a succubus, but for like I mean at least basketball he, at least he's touched the basketball since April. So AD AD is like the quintessential Robin. Wow, you're a dick. He is. He night win. Except for he was the best player on the bubble team that won, allegedly. Golden State said, "You know, we're gonna take the year off. End up with pretty much arguably the best player in the draft." Now my man's over here is a fucking warrior fan. Great. No, everybody in my family was always a Warriors Here fan. we go. I'm actually Here the, we fucking I'm like the only go. Lakers fan in my family like that. No, seriously. My Here mom is a diehard go. Warriors fan. She only liked the Lakers because of Kobe and Shaq. Mostly Kobe. Because she worked with them. Okay, bro. That's that's the worst excuse. I was only a fan of a team for no, 20 I'm years. I'm a Lakers fan. I was only a fan of a team for 20 years. Like, Yeah. <laughs> My mom, like, when she told, when she told, she's like, I don't fucking like the Lakers. I just like Kobe, though. That's two generations. That's 20 years. She's like, I'm a Golden State. I'm a Warriors fan through and through because I'm from Oakland. But she's from a different, like, she's she's born in the 60s, bro. Like, she's really, like, from that era. She sat through, like, a Donald Foyle basketball. Like, she Donald sat- Foyle was post-Kobe, so... I'm just trying to help you get your facts right. I know that. She sat. She remembers Rick Barry, though. My granddad apparently used to hang out with a lot of famous athletes back in the day. Cotton Club in West Oakland. Legendary. Legendary times. Um, mm. But, yeah, I mean, so, obviously, Aaron Donald. The Rams either have drug money or avoiding RICO charges. Like, they have almost as much money as God, but definitely more money than the devil. Um, They gave Aaron Donald a three-year, $95 million contract extension, $40 million guaranteed, which is like the highest ever for a non-QB. What, are you making damn near 40, almost $40 million a year? Not like 30-something a year. Well, Cooper Cup got three years, $80 million with $75 million guaranteed. How do you feel about how he announced it? On I'm Athlete? Oh, I didn't see that. I was talking about the video he did on social media where he was, like, trying to reenact the Super Bowl or whatever. Uh, he was like, rambling, I'm so excited. He was like, I want to do this all over again, blah, blah, blah. 
I mean, it's like, can you blame him? Rams are some cornballs. They are, but he was like, he's like the best player. You the- think Kanye was like, look, Stan, uh, what's what's the GM's name again? Les? Les. You're going to give us $40 million and we won't go off on social media, and we won't retire. Then he just gave him that psychotic laugh. Ha, ha, ha! And they're like, yeah. all right, I guess we are. I guess that's what we're doing. Because Aaron Donald literally went from signing with Donda Sports as like the first athlete to getting a record-breaking contract with the Rams in the same week. Like, that was just wild to me. I'm happy for him, though, man. He deserves it. He's one of the greatest players I've ever seen with my eyes play. Um, he's a juggernaut. Commands three players on the field. Makes every single little level better and yeah like he he was on the team in the Jeff Fisher years like so he's been through it he went through the move he's now like he's now LAFI'd I guess you could say wearing all black hanging out with Kanye um but yeah man I'm I'm happy for Aaron Donald I just think it's more amazing that they still had money to give Cooper Cup. Like, they are playing the long game. Like, they're just, they're doing it mad. They're just giving everybody seven-year contract extensions. And then, like, year three and four, they're just renegotiating and tearing up the contract again to reset the market. And then letting other guys kind of walk. It's brilliant, actually. I mean, they haven't gone without losses, right? Like, they lost Philip Gaines. They lost uh, Darius Who? Williams, the corner. Um, Who's Philip Gaines? The nose tackle. Greg Gaines? Greg Gaines. There you go. My bad. Philip Gaines is a corner. I was about to say, he went to Rice. Um, they lost some linebackers. They had to trade Robert Woods. So, like, not too many moving parts. But essentially, I think I heard Ian Rappaport say this, and it's like, The Rams basically have no middle class. They don't. They have elite players, Aaron Donald, Matt Stafford, um, Jalen Ramsey, Cooper Cup, and then a bunch of other young players that are a mix of draft picks, you know, undrafted free agents, rehashes. And it's like, you can only build that sort of team if you're hitting on your draft picks, no matter where they are in the late rounds. Even. Or if you're getting good short-term deals with veterans. That's pretty much how that works. Oh, yeah, and they lost Vaughn. Vaughn got a like $120 million contract. Yeah, that was the other loss, though, this, this season. Imagine the Bills don't make the Super Bowl and they paid him all that money. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Uh I feel like the Rams are still going to be a contender. I don't know. It, it depends on how a lot of the NFC team looks because I think the, da- the deck is stacked a little bit more in the AFC. But the three contenders in the NFC, I think, are, are like really all kind of neck and neck. I, you got to give the Rams the benefit of the doubt having won in last year. So maybe they're a little bit ahead of the Buccaneers and and the Packers, especially because the Packers lost, you know, their second best player. But overall, I mean, I think it's it's set up for the Rams to to continue to contend at least for the, these next couple of years, if not beyond that. Because if there's one thing I know about this team, like they ran well, and whatever the team looks like post Aaron Donald, I think they'll start preparing for that sooner than probably any of us even expect. And you got cover quarters, you got Bobby Wagner. They're always building for like to where they have uh, leverage and wiggle room. So I think eventually 
they get to a point where they might have to switch back to a three to a four three and actually like build pass rushers around Aaron Donald if he ever slows down. You know? Like it's gonna come to a point where it's like, okay, you can't just have him, you know, as a five technique. Like you're gonna have to like go back to Okay, we got one middle linebacker, two linebackers, and we're running heavy nickel. Like four two five of sorts. But I'm just wondering if like I don't disagree with what you're saying. That's probably what the future looks like for Aaron Donald, like in the next one to two years. I mean, we already kind of seen them try to do that, bringing in Vaughn. We've seen them bring in Fowler, you know, Leonard Floyd. So I don't think they've ever like been ad- like not willing to bring in extra help for Aaron Donald, but I definitely think he's going to need more in the next couple years. I just think that with the way this team kind of preps for a na- for like now, it would not surprise me to see them like even move Aaron Donald in like three years, two years. I think once he shows even a glimpse. They might do something to to kind of recoup some of the the young players they've they've sacrificed in other deals. Cause, but I don't know, man. It's that's what I'm saying. Is like I don't know. Like I can't see this team rebuilding just because of the market they're in and the profile they have. But also, like you really have to rebuild nowadays. That's, uh, exactly, you don't. But at the same time, like, well, everyone's. And all those elite players are, are approaching 30 or they're over 30. So there's got to be some contingency plan at some point. But we'll see, man. Shout out to Steph Curry for finally winning NBA Finals MVP. This dude ain't had internet for two hours, and he's just on his phone, barely even engaged with the show. Typical. No, I'm, I was waiting to talk about the real big news. You're moderating. You could talk about the real big news. Now I feel like you, you wanted to get. I wanted you to get your Rams talk out because you're a closet Rams fan. Except uh, for I'm a Raiders fan with Charger tickets, but all right, let's just and you're a closet Raiders it more fan. by saying I'm a closet Rams fan. You are. I've just covered the Rams a long time. Yeah. Um. So Mika Fitzpatrick pretty much reset the safety market, and like unlike the Jamal Adams deal, you can't really take shots at it or say you overpaid for Jamal Adams because he's pretty much a fast-ass linebacker who can't really cover. Um, this dude's a two-time All-Pro, two-time Pro Bowler. Miami totally, uh, you know, messed up when they traded him. But, hey, uh, he said he wasn't a corner and he meant it. So, pretty much... He got a four year seventy three point six million dollar contract. Uh eighteen point four million a year. Which was a guarantee. Let me check again. Guarantee I wanna say was it sixty? I mean Stillers fans gotta be happy, right? Like, oh yeah, that's yeah, that's a foundational piece. De- yeah, they keep their best defensive player. I don't yeah, know. I I would say they need him more than they need TJ Watt. I don't know about that. But I mean, I mean, I kind of forgot about TJ Watt, but I think TJ Watt gets suspended for a couple games. Oh yeah, that's true. But I think they're equal outside of that. I think those are two foundational pieces. No, because they don't have elite corners. They have an elite safety, and they can afford to blitz TJ Watt. They I forget who they have on the other side. The Ali Highsmith. I mean, or, yeah, they're not really blitzing him. He's kind of like their primary rusher. Yeah. Just stands up. But I'm saying, if you take him away, now that they have Miles Jack, so they have Miles Jack, Devin Bush, two uber athletic linebackers who should be able to cover and stop the run between the two of them. It's uber knee history. That's true. They both got knee issues. But either way, Mika Fitzpatrick holds that secondary together. You can have a great pass rusher and have a shitty defense. High Oakland, Ra- high Oakland Raiders, high Las Vegas Raiders. So yeah, that's all possible. But if you have a safety 
gets the defense lined up and is, you know. You but I think over- the, the other part of it is if you're Minka Fitzpatrick, are you going to sign up for five years with no T.J. Watt? Hello, being in Miami again. But that's what I'm saying. That's like being in Miami again. No, he was he wanted out of Miami because they wanted to use him like as a all over the place. He's like, I'm a safety, bro. Yeah, but besides that, he was on a barren defense. Mm, they had a couple of pass rushers. It was a hodgepodge defense, but more so, he wanted out because he didn't agree with his role. Either way, even when they drafted him. People questioned it if it was going to work. Who's was going to be a corner they, because they said you're going to play corner, but we're going to move you around, linebacker, all this other stuff. He's like, dog, I'm a free safety. Quit playing. So he resets the safety market. Jesse Bates is up next. It's really interesting. There's going to be a, a safety making twenty million a year, probably in the next two to three years. And that'll be real interesting to see who it's going to end up being. Cold safety, Kari Willis, former fourth-round pick, retired after four years to become a full-time minister. Salute to him. Good good for him. He has, like, 219 career tackles. He's a big contributor for that defense. Uh, Broncos sold – the Broncos were sold – to the heir of the Walmart fortune for four point six five billion dollars. Wild. Think they they undercut it? You think it should be more? No, I mean I think that's what the bids were at. Like I feel like that's the fair market. I just think that's just, a lot of money, and that's a lot of um to be mid. Basically, having Broncos jerseys on discount at Walmart. It's crazy. I I texted my homie and told him that a couple weeks ago. Um, I feel like they're trying to loop. How the fuck are you clicking your tongue? I'm not clicking my tongue. You're clicking your lips. Oh, no. I was um, chattering. No, you have a mic like right in front of you. Sorry. Sorry. It's a bad habit. Jesus Christ, I thought I was working with a professional. I am. Motherfucker didn't even do that shit at the sundial, bro. Don't tell me it's a bad habit, bro, because you ain't never done that shit. Right? Hey, dog, 2014 was a long-ass <laughs> time ago. I'm just saying, bro. I'm bro. like three, I've been like three different people. Don't blame it on your subconscious brain, bro, because. I've been like three not different a, people. Yeah, since. we've done 400 episodes, and you I haven't done that shit before, so. Hey, man, I'm a different person. I lost no, like 30, I was like 30 pounds out. in three weeks. Uh, I don't know. I'll take the under. I mean, I was, okay, it's more like 25, but still. But, um, no, like, honestly, I still think the Raiders are a more valuable franchise. Like, how much did the Clippers uh, get sold for? Yeah, but it's not $2 billion, but it's not even about that. It's about the assets. But It's, it's about the debt. It's about what you own versus what you don't own. There's a lot of variables within it. And also, like, who's willing to buy you? Raiders are damn near in the Stone Age, so it wouldn't surprise me. They're not worth that much. I mean, they have the intellectual property, and now they have... They have to be worth a lot. Now they have a property, but all that shit is under, under debt. Oh, that shit is finance. Didn't one of their former uh their former team president he just got he signed on to do like a big Vegas project. To be the head of a big Vegas project for like a sporting arena or something. I read that. No idea. I I caught it. But Bedane, I forget how to say his last name, but he's got a job. He'll be working in Vegas. Not like directly related to football, but sporting venues so you know but yeah i think i read some of the broncos ownership is trying to loop in peyton manning and like i've seen they him, are and i've seen him on social media there a lot more he was with russell wilson at the fucking rockies game colorado avalanche um one game one of the stanley cup finals and russell wilson and sierra were there so and that was so corny it's like 
don't know, man. It's like watch like literally Russell Wilson is like watching one of those church movies where it's like you He's know safe. where it's going. It's like you know exactly what's gonna happen. There's gonna be some motivational speech, and then by the power of God, they're gonna pull through at the end. Whatever it is, whether it's a team, an illness, whatever. So, but yet you keep watching it, and it's just like so it, seventh heaven it, before you found out the father was a massive pedophile. It just, it's like it never, it never surprises you how it gets cornier. But then, like, you keep watching, and you're just like, so Seinfeld. Do I say? Do I hate myself? Like Seinfeld. Doing this to myself. Seinfeld. Frazier. No, I never Mostly watched Seinfeld. any of those. You never watched Seinfeld. I mean, I watch Seinfeld, kind of, but not really. Even if you don't watch Seinfeld, you watch Seinfeld. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, Lions signed Devin Funches as a tight end. He hasn't played in the league since, like, 2019. Drafted as a receiver. I think he got on somewhere else as a tight end before he was out the league. or maybe No, he went year. to Green Bay as a receiver and got hurt. No, but after that, he went somewhere else as a tight end. He's he's been bouncing around as a tight end already. No, he just I'm telling came you, back bro. As a tight end. I'm telling you, bro. He might have got an injury settlement, but yeah, he saw he got signed by the Detroit Lions as a tight end, and that's perfect to, to be a backup tight end to Pro Bowl tight end TJ Hawkinson. So there you go. Um, Jack Dorio put his potentially racist ass foot in his mouth. And then apparently, I guess he got fined, and Ron Rivera was uh, okay with his apology and explanation to the team. He pretty much said protesters were, like, the worst. Um, and then said, well, you got protesters doing all this horrible stuff, but then you got a dust-up on January 6th at the White House, and people were trying to compare the two, and everybody's like, dude, did you really just call a terroristic insurrection where people died and somebody tried to take over the country and the Capitol and kill like congressmen and damn near the vice president. Like, are you saying like a national insurrectionist movement at the white house was a dust up and fellow players called him out on his bullshit. Uh, former NFL receiver, Doug Baldwin, it's like a lot of white cats from the Bay Area talk like this, so it doesn't surprise me. There's some sundown towns in the Bay Area. Or if you're black, you ain't want to be there during the daytime. You think Antebellum It was South with the Forty Niners. Hmm? With the Forty Niners. What was with the Forty Niners? The Forty Niners oh, signed him as a tight end, yeah. I don't even remember that. Last year. He got no burn then. Nope. He got literally no burn. Just yeah, but yeah, on Del Rio, man, he must got injury settlement because I didn't even hear about that signing. He was on their practice squad, I think, or something. Oh yeah, like so definitely. Uh, anyways, back to Del Rio. It's funny to me, like how kind of ignorant this generation can be. That generation can be. It's like willfully ignorant and stupid. Like, dude. Like, do you not want to be a head coach again? Like, if that's the case, then why you... do you talk like a Klansman? No, I'm just saying, like, what if if you don't want to be a coach again, then like just why it. be a D coordinator? Like, you just like really like fucking 80 hour grinds and, and breaking down the film. Like, that's just for defenses that aren't even that good. You gotta calm down, bro. Dario's had a lot of good defenses. Hey, bro. How good was the the Commandos defense last year? I don't know, but Google the year it. before they were top ten. Oh, because they had like a, a top three player on their defense, and Montez Sweat and fast ass linebackers and decent enough corners, and the offense wasn't uh, an anemic fucking coloscopy bag that exploded in a hospital room. Yeah. Well, that's kind of what happens when your number one pick is out a year. Nah, I'm talking about before he got hurt. Like, Dario always looks good when it's, like, either his first year and it's somebody else's players or 
he just has to focus on the defense because the offense is super elite. Remember the Denver Bronco days? Yeah, that's called being a coordinator. No, but I'm saying when he has his defense has to carry the team, it's always trash. Like, say what you want about certain D coordinators, but certain D coordinators, they go somewhere, that defense is solid. Whether the offense is trash or not. I don't know. I think you're thinking more of the Wade Phillips Broncos because actually the John, the Jack Del Rio Broncos was a much more defensive team. That that still is my same point. Like he, he's a good defensive coordinator. That's what I'm saying. I don't think you need to take away. But he's from, never I don't, like, I don't think you need to take he's away. He's never been from an his elite results. head coach, and he's never been an elite defensive coordinator. I don't think you need to take away from his on field, um, I wouldn't say success, merit, in order to make your point about him. Being a dumbass, but what I'm saying is no. But I'm saying him being a dumbass is like just adds more perspective to why, like you said, he hasn't been a head coach more often. He won't be a head coach because you you're not coaching college with that mentality, especially not now with all the NIL stuff. And you your alma mater needs to coach every other year. No, nah, Lincoln Riley said. Well, now, but I'm saying. Why do you think he didn't get more consideration for that job? And then because the USC level, would never hire him or Jeff Fisher. That'd be stupid. Well, yeah, because of how they think like that. And then moving on, actually, I'm not gonna loop Jeff Fisher in that because Jeff Fisher is just well, fucking doing his own thing, living his own life. He chilling. He, leave he, that man. We can leave that man alone. Yeah, but he's been the butt of, of many jokes for a long time. It ain't the butt. Like he just really he those, is a joke. Those two guys would never be coaches on the college level. They already got Nick Saban. So, like, that asshole mentality or that stern conservative approach that you tie into football um, under the guise of what you actually believe, but you send it to a room full of black players, that shit not going to fly when they're, like, 19 and 20 and 21, 22, and they get more bread than some of your assistant coaches because they're the commodity and you're just here to babysit. What you might say in a in like a press conference to piss everybody off, and then they fire you. And like three of the school's best recruits that ever signed in school history all go to the transfer portal, and it's your fault. Yeah, but even on the NFL level, I mean, with all of the things that have been going on off the field, it's like nobody's gonna respect you when they know how you feel. And and when you look at the way his teams broke down. How Jacksonville end, ended, how Raiders ended, how Oakland ended. It's like, dude, you like not only do you have dated coaching beliefs, beliefs, just in general, as you're as just on top of that, like on top of those dated beliefs, like. Nobody's going to respect you because they know how you think. Like, they know how you are, and you don't even deliver. Like, you don't even demand the best out of yourself every day. Like, you're looking to cut out early because you made a wild card or because you're 8-8, eight and because eight, you're 500. So not only are you middle of the pack, mid, but you're also... You're you're just obsolete. That's what I'm saying. It's like, why, Del Rio, do you want to go on record and show the world how obsolete you are? Anytime I hear a boomer or whatever generation say something stupid, it's like... You just want to die with a tainted legacy, don't you? Yeah, like, like, what are you doing? Like, you don't even have to sit... Nobody even asked you, bro. Like, you don't know how to redirect a question? This is why your your friends your your friends your son's black friends didn't really fuck with you, and your son didn't know why. So people thought your son was racist, and really it just came from you, and your son had to suffer. I'm not saying that actually happened, but there are parents who were like that. It's like 
Why don't your friends come over? Because they don't fucking like you, Dad. They don't trust you. They know you don't really fuck with them. You don't like their parents. So how do you think they're going to expect you to treat them? Like, you would call the cops on a black person. That kind of vibe. That's the kind of vibe Jack Dario gives off every time he opens his mouth. You shoot a black person on his property and claim he's a patriot. Some shit like that. White supremacist adjacent. When you open your mouth and keep saying the same, and he said the same thing for a while now. Or oh, oh, that that those same talking points of oh, this generation is too soft, blase, yeah. blase. Like no, your generation was soft. You didn't stand for shit. You just did drugs and fucked. And then when in the nineties you sold drugs, and now all the kids who were the children of drug addicts and drug dealers are out here trying to figure out this economy that you were too cowardly to try to figure out when you were in your twenties because you didn't do shit but fuck party and bullshit. And now you want to get conservative when you get in your forties and fifties. Fuck out of here. That's how you come off Jack Del Rio. Let's look in your past when you were in your 20s. What were you doing? All the all this wild shit you were doing at USC, allegedly. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about your dirt. Since everybody wants to come out on millennials who are now in their 30s and 40s and talk about shit we said and did in our 20s, let's talk about what you did. Ultimately, as you mentioned, Del Rio's been like backhandedly, like subliminally, you know, dropping these hints throughout the past, like, really? Seven years? Really, since years. Kaepernick took a knee. Exact. Five to seven years. So, this was just the most direct con- the most direct comment, and I think the result of it was they, they fined him 100K, and then they donated it to police or something like that? Yeah, a t- you donated it to a police organization. Something stupid like that. We, we gotta talk about Ron Rivera, too. Like, like Ron Rivera's kind of on that same boat. Like, mm, the you might sell out your own people boat. The Honestly, air, the, most most football coaches probably are. But like, it's like, especially football coaches like not West. He's a Latino dude who keeps guys like this around him. White dudes like Bro, this around let's, him. Let's not act like we don't know. A gang full of Mexicans who voted for Trump. I, I said Latino because yeah. uh, Cubans, uh, Cubans have a huge fucking problem with them. With this, all the dark skin, all the light skin ones, who their grandparents got exiled, or they just came here to come up and shit on Afro Cubans. As soon as they get here, they want to act white. A lot of the if we pulled if we pulled the coattail and a lot of Latinos from other places. On the census, they claim white. There's some black people who claim white too. But like there's a lot of people who are self hating and they want to buy into the identity of whiteness socially. So they talk a certain way, they they keep up certain customs, they're always um, you know, with the program. Like, I'm sorry, but if too many white people like you, I can't really trust you. Like, if too many people who are status quo like you there's some there's some skullduggery about you I can't really trust. Like, bro, you just agree with everything that's said. Like, you know what those people say about you when you're not around, right? What they look, what they think about people who look like you, but you all gunk, like on some Herschel Walker shit. Like, but yeah, on to other things. College football. All right, so. In the latest NIL news, USC, the athletic, USC has an athletic department. Um, that's an agreement with Stay Doubted. Uh, pretty much, Stay Doubted is a modern day media agency empowering the next generation of student athletes and fans. It's going to launch later this summer. In time for the fall sports season. Um, Pretty much athletic departments are getting behind and being proactive. Um, what it's going to say is it's, uh, what they're go- what it's going to offer is dozens of services to support all aspects of the student athlete experience, which involves coaching, medical, academic nutrition, strength training, sports psychology, career planning, and a bunch of other stuff. 
And um, State Doubt It has managed over $63 million in sports partnerships, including more than $1 million in collegiate athlete partnerships in the first year of NIL. Uh, Pretty much partnerships with big names like Microsoft, Verizon, Amazon, Walmart. That's a lot of brand opportunities and... There's just a lot there for, like, athletes to take advantage of. Uh, I hope y'all got good tax guys because next year is going to be a really, your quarterly tax return is going to be some interesting shit. You have to grow up real fast. So, yeah, good luck to them. And it's good to see schools doing it, essentially. Yeah, and I saw that you put this lower in the rundown, but I think you should, we should talk about it here. Um, Michael Vig bring brought on to an agency as an NRL advisor. Yeah, that was next. Uh, I think Vic even said, like, if they had NIL back then, he probably would have stayed at Virginia Tech. Who knows? Shit. With that NIL, maybe Marcus Vig never fake robs that McDonald's. Just saying. <laughs> You're not wrong. Maybe with NIL, Jamarcus Russell stays in college for another year and gets sponsored by, like, Bo Jangles or... Damn, bro. Like that raising canes. Bro, that fucking um That's what I was gonna talk about. Oh, players Tribune? Was it Players Tribune? Or yeah, I it was imagine? Players Tribune. I forgot to put that, that shit was fucking on the rundown. Cold, bro. That video was fucking cold. He said Bro, I wasn't the only reason that team sucked. <laughs> Y'all can get mad at me all you want to. I was dealing with shit. I was going through shit. We weren't a brotherhood at all. I know I could watch how the team played. That shit wasn't close knit. But they had no coaching. Lane Kiffin was the coach. So it's like, and Lane Kiffin will probably tell you, I shouldn't have been the fucking coach of the Raiders. I wasn't Not ready. At that time. I wasn't ready. Now I'm probably ready. Nah, I, back then I wasn't ready. And that's the cold part. When you're young, sometimes you get handed some shit, and it's almost wrong that it was given to you. Because the people who are giving it to you know you don't have well, you know you don't the experience. You don't know of, what you don't know until you finally know it, and then you're like, "Fuck, I wish I knew this ten years ago." And I mean, that can be an advantage. I mean, it worked out for Sean McVay, but he had systems in place he where he a, couldn't, like, he wouldn't fail forward, and if you he did fail, a, you would notice it. He had an he had they gave him all three established coordinators. He had a GM who had been there, already laid the groundwork. He had a, a owner with deep pockets and a thirsty fan base, like, and it all just kind of came together. And credit to him, but also, like, that could have easily went, or went left as well. I don't know, man, but, but bring him back to Vic. I guess the the key role with that is just mentoring quarterbacks. I think he's working with a quarterback in at Clemson and and another DJ uh, Ugalele. Lele. Yeah, man, and and You're honestly, working. like I don't like when I think about Michael Vick. Obviously, the off field stuff, like he can advise people on. Hey, like don't front load your cousin's businesses. Like, you should have eyes on all the shit that you're doing. Like, don't just trust anyone just because they came up with you on the block or came up with you or even just because they're family. Like, you're accountable to all this shit because it's your name on the door. It's your paycheck financing it. So guess who's going to get off? Them, not you. (laughs) Like, they're going to get off and they're going to roll on you and... There you go. Two two years of your prime kissed away. But but even in addition to that, I think how he re, remade himself and even post NFL, you know, he was one of the first athletes to kind of lean into FanDuel. You know, he's done camps. He's worked in broadcasts. He makes appearances. So he's done a lot in and around the game. And I think that's a perspective that I would want if I were an athlete evaluating all these different brand opportunities and, and, you know, situations like who, who 
better than Michael Vick. And especially now in today's league, because just like we talked about before, like, it's hard being the first. It's hard being one of the earliest. Like, And now the black quarterback, the athletic quarterback, is becoming more commonplace. Michael Vick had to fight a lot of fucking stereotypes, a lot of fucking agenda setting, a lot of bullshit. And technically he overcame it until they decided to create federal laws, something that's a misdemeanor in most states in this country. Like dog fighting still isn't really a federal crime in most states. Just want to point that out. It's still only like a $250 ticket in some states. Probation. Yeah, but it, I mean... There's levels to it though too because it wasn't just dog fighting. But well, when you add in like a racketeering charge, it was dog charge. fighting. It was it was um, animal cruelty. It was uh, fucking racketeering. It was. But they only throw racketeering on black people. They don't throw racketeering on white on the Hell's Angels. They don't like the same thing with YSL. Like they only hit you with racketeering and conspiracy because. Somebody they snitched on you. No, they have... Because somebody snitched on you. No, that's part of it. That's <laughs> part of it. No, but it's you. usually... You only get hit with the racketeering and conspiracy because they can't prove you did it, but they know you had the means Adjacent and the access. Yeah, like, you didn't shoot the gun, but you were in the car. Or you didn't call the hit, but we can prove with your amount of reach and assets, it's well within the scope of reason that you could have done it. And that's the worst type of fucking charge. Yeah, but Vic's name was on all that shit. And that, he, he, that, admits, he admits to doing it. He did it. That's my point. Like, but the, they can the throw the charges, is, but they stuck because he did it. But the other thing is, we've talked about this, and I've talked about this way too many times in my life. But seen the documentary a thousand times. Ultimately, grew up in a in a time and a place where it wasn't that abnormal to fight dogs. They're still fighting dogs. Don't let Peter fool you. They're still fighting dogs heavy in the Midwest and in Virginia and in the deep South. They're still dog fighting. They're still, they're human trafficking people. You think they stop dog fighting? Okay. I can't laugh at that. You're not supposed to. That that was, that was kind of funny. Someone's getting human trafficked this very second. Think about that. Think about how you're not being human trafficked right now. Now think about how there's a dog fighting. Somebody's getting struck by everything is happening all at once, all the time. You just it just depends on when she hits you. But like because he was black and he was like a generational uh lightning rod of influence, they had they always make an example out of black people. And when you're a black athlete, like as the saying goes, no black person gets to leave the entertainment industry clean. Can't name one. You can't name one who went out clean. Name one. Ipsy couldn't go out clean. L.A. Reed? L.A. Reed's still alive. He got plenty of dirt. Oh, I thought you meant... Yeah, I guess. No, 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 no black celebrity dies with a clean slate or a clean name. They always got to throw some dirt. Whack 100 allegedly got a gay sex tape out on Nipsey Hussle. Stevie Wonder? Why the fuck does Whack 100 have all this shit, bro? Because he's a fed. I don't even think him and Big does U. Were, the fucking I don't really stone? think him and Big U are even arguing, Can bro. He have the, does he have the time stone? Too? Since when the fuck are gang members getting podcasts now? Since when are gang members just out here just talking about all the illegal crime and shit they do on the internet and they're not connected to law enforcement? I mean, I listen. <laughs> I'm just saying. I know you will listen because you're not from that life. <laughs> but for somebody who's like adjacent, like, uh, these are federal agents talking. <laughs> Bro, Black 100 has fucking extorted Kanye with a sex tape that Ray J had we and a second sex tape. You all know the story. He extorted Oscar De La Hoya over a sex tape for $800,000. How the fuck do you have a, a sex tape of Oscar De La Hoya, Whack 100? Why? Because L.A. gang members are known for extorting people. 
That's it. You come to LA, it's extortion out here. It just is. I'm not saying anything controversial. The shit just is. So, yeah. And I really don't think Big U and Wack are really arguing. I think that shit is all fake. I don't believe none of this shit out here. All these celebrities are fake. They all got branding deals, shit we don't know about. But, yeah, off that. All right. DK Metcalf is holding out. Touchdown or turnover for DK. He should hold out. It's, it's bogus that they're finding him. Like, unless you trade, like, unless you do, like, a superstar receiver for a superstar receiver, like, if they go to the commandos, like, hey, give us Terry McLaren, and we'll give you DK Metcalf. Why the fuck don't teams do that? Like, why do they make it so complicated, bro? Because you're still going to pay people. Like, the Titans could have got DK instead of just punting A.J. Brown. I mean, think about it. Scary Terry. Think about it. He's not reporting unless he gets a new deal. So you have to have a deal in place first on both sides. Then the players damn near have to agree to the trade. My thing is, if you're going to do stuff like that, it would just make perfect sense to do the whole Clinton Portis for Champ Bailey trade and swap picks. Trade a player for a player, fine. You go to this city, you go to that city, and we'll work out a deal. Or we'll have a deal worked out. Hey, this team's going to pay you this much money. Yeah, you might not want to play here, but you're going to get paid. Do you want to go? Yes or not? If not, you can hold out. We'll just keep finding you. But the fact that both these guys got to the end of their rookie deals and aren't getting paid is criminal. I'm just not giving... I might give Terry $20 million. I give a DK twenty million. He can get seventeen. All right, something from last week we didn't get to talk about. Oh yeah, Hunter Renfro got a contract extension too. Damn, is Hunter Renfro? Why the fuck are you throwing that in there now? Because I'm just realizing touchdown and turnover. Why don't you do something with that? What 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 fact is that bringing? Because it just hit me like, great DK you... Metcalf is going to get less money than Hunter Renfro. Yeah, because he had worse stats. Take your tangent. Damn. We're not even doing take your tangent, sir. We're doing touchdown. Touchdown to turnover. Fine. This is not your best show, bro. Nah, it's just like, damn, it really hit me. Like, I totally forgot that he got the contract extension and the Raiders spent like $400 million this all season. But it's like, really, let's think about it. Yeah, but from what, what is I Hunter- understand is both the move with Carr and Renfro created a little bit of cap space, and then they got some added relief with Littleton officially coming off the books after the first I don't know. Ultimately, like these these secondary receivers getting. Ultimately, know, whatever you're giving Renfro makes up for the fact that like he was not making anything the past two years. Yeah, and he was basically the focal point of the offense. Was so, he? He has like twenty one million dollars guaranteed. So I I think what he got is fair, and especially with the when you consider what Christian Kirk. Got, and a lot of the other receiver market got. No, I just hope that ultimately your team can put together a, a decent enough defense so there's no excuses for that offense because if you got a number one receiver, you got a number one, number two receiver, like you got a quarterback that according to Devontae, isn't too far off from Aaron Rodgers talent-wise, then there's no fucking excuse. And don't blame it on the O-line, because guess what? The O-line's been you was brought actually the, you, elite in pass blocking last you year. You brought Parker back. You brought Good back. You signed. You brought that old Patriot dude, that I, whose name I don't know how to say. Carmen? No, uh, Eller, Ellerminer... E-L-U-D. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. You're not that old. So. Jermaine Elamir or some shit go. like that. Yeah. So you brought all those guys back. So that's on, that's on you guys if that online doesn't pop. And I don't want to hear it on the defensive side either because you got a pro ball linebacker. You 
got two Pro Bowl edge rushers, and you got a bunch of corners with starting experience. So, again, figure it out. Figure it out. And you drafted 87 defensive tackles, <laughs> which you passed on perfectly good receivers. Calvin Austin Jr. could have been a Raider, and then the Raiders could have really went four wide. All right, so- Keelan Cole. Okay, we'll hope he's all right. But not nah, for real. Like Hunter Renfro, kind of his signing kind of messes up DK's money, which is kind of sad when you think about it. Because DK was so bad this year, Lockett actually is like a proven commodity, so he already got his money. I just the Seahawks are like uh, Hunter Renfro is more productive than you as a receiver. That's sick. All right. Again, something we didn't get to last week. Odell crashed uh, McVay's wedding. Touchdown or turnover? It's only a touchdown if he actually resigns with the Rams. <laughs> McVay said he loved it. He said he was glad to see him. So it wasn't that big of a deal. But So you Mc- crashed my wedding. Now you got to resign. Pretty much. The trophy was a Lombardi, which was cool. Yeah. But also kind of can't be expected. Some, it's probably a shit ton of, shit ton of coke and you can, no, you can get questionable sexual activity at that way. I'm not going to say any of that. I'm not <laughs> going to assume any of that. And I just said whack 100 is a federal agent. <laughs> You're not going to assume Sean McVay did a shit ton of coke at his wedding? He had an edible. If you walked in. What if he had an edible, edible like, arrangement? I'm walking into Sean McVay's wedding expecting a. a Classy weed rooms? Expe- expecting something in my goodie bag. I'll put it to you that way. So like edible, edible Tell me that dude hangs out at Manhattan Beach all the time and he ain't doing coke. Santa Monica. Nah, I heard he he's he be in Manhattan. Hermosa, nah, Hermosa's too high key, low key. Like, no, Hermosa is low key, high key as fuck. You can't really be there and not be seen. Kind of straight down to like either Marina Del Rey to where you can kind of get in and out. You can kind of shake the spot, in Marina Del Rey. Maybe Santa Monica. Santa Monica's too obvious. All right. Probably Palisades. Let's keep it moving. XFL announces individual coaches as a group. Touchdown or turnover? Uh, I mean, Rod Woodson doesn't have his full staff yet. But Rod Woodson's going to be one of the head coaches. I think Reggie Barlow probably has the best-looking staff. You got Von Hutchins as, like, a scout. Von Hutchins... Recruited a lot of those guys for the NFL PA Bowl. He's also a former NFL player himself. So I like uh, what Reggie Barlow, what he did. It should be interesting to see what he does uh, going forward. All right. And I don't know why the fuck this is on my run now, but Drake drops album, honestly, never mind. He dropped it, and honestly, never mind, because people are shitting on it on Twitter. I haven't even thought about a Drake album, if I'm being honest. Because Drake makes the same album for the past 12 years. All his albums sound the same. He's made the same album. All the slaps are going to be on the radio, the club, and TikTok. Why do I need to listen to the album? Exactly. (laughs) Like, why? I'm going to consume it via proxy on the internet. So, like... I actually listen. Like, I barely even listened to, um, what was his last one? Not Scorpion. Was it Demo? It's the Demo one with Lanes? the, with the ski mask. No, it's the one with the, uh, bait, with the pregnant chicks on the front. Oh, Certified Lover Boy. That one was even worse. Yep. All right. Now I'll give you another one. It's reported that, the Miami Dolphins offered Sean Payton, former Saints head coach, who just went into retirement, 
four-year, $100 million contract to become the head coach. Touchdown or turnover? Peyton turning down that deal. I mean, allegedly, Tom Brady was supposed to join him, so I believe that deal was probably in place. But do you think him passing on that deal is a touchdown or a turnover? I said touchdown. He probably was like, I don't want another rebuild. I mean, I, he I probably, think, I really, I really think he wanted can, to as his QB. But if anyone can rebuild Dink and Dunk to a, it's the dude who rebuilt Dink and Dunk Breeze, right? Bro, they are trashing Drake's album right now. The track list, this dude said 0 for 10, 0 for 10, 2 for 10, 1 of 10, 2.5 out of 10, 6 out of 10. 0 for 10, 3 out of 10, 0 for 10, 2 out of 10, 4 out of 10, 1 out of 10, 6 out of 10, and 21 Savage carried the last song. Somebody said, delete, Drake, delete this album. You still got time. Wow. Ooh. Drake got a dance album. All right. Oh, my God. This is sick. This is sick. I'm moving on to this might be worse than uh when uh what's that one group that ear raped everybody when they dropped uh music that nobody asked for Bono what that what was Bono oh, yeah yeah that fucking Apple Music album that was on everyone's iPhone for nobody no damn fu- reason that, that's when I was an Android person but yeah they are not loving. I'm telling you, Drake makes the same shit. This dude had his own basketball league and won a championship in it and started quoting Kobe. It's, you, you can see it. It's like a fucking SBL league or something. So the like UFC. That. Huh? Huh? SBL or some shit like that. He started quoting Kobe. Drake has full on braids, cornrows, like just real light skin shit, dude. Just real light skin dude shit. It's annoying. It's just. All right, so Jennifer Lopez hated the, the Super Bowl halftime show, Take Her Ten. Oh, yeah, I've been waiting for this. Bro, she went off in the documentary. when She was talking to Shakira. She's like, first off, only one person needed to do this if you're only going to give us, like, 20 minutes. It's hard to on some diva shit. She didn't want to share the stage with Shakira like that. But mostly it's like, if we're two legends, we should at least get 30 minutes. Why are we getting seven minutes? the fuck and then she had her daughter singing one of her songs in a cage and fox or whoever they were like we don't want that no we don't we don't want that message out there like well you got kids in cages you got mexican kids in cages my daughter's in a cage singing like nah this is gonna stay in the show so she fought for some stuff they were pissed about it they tried to make the best of it they're like, pretty much they're using us as token minorities to an extent. She's like, two people are doing one person's job. This is bullshit. We should have more time. And she was just pissed about it. She didn't like it. She had beef with the higher ups uh, for the show. I'm I'm glad this That's came out. That's all cute and dandy, but you still took the bag. You still did the show, so... What Super Bowl really halftime performances about? are free. What are you talking about? They don't get paid. Who said that? They don't get paid. Who said that? It's a known fact they don't get paid. Who said that? Who said that? People attached to it. Who said that, bro? People attached to it. They don't get paid. It's That's for the lie. look. It's quote unquote for the look. That's a lot. Like the weekend didn't get paid. He spent like three point five million dollars of his own money on the halftime show. They don't get paid. The dancers barely get paid. They might get like a small stipend, but they don't get paid for the Super Bowl halftime show. It's like your streams and shit go up. But yeah, I've yet to see somebody, um, like I don't think Dr. Trey got paid for that halftime show. And honestly, I think that was one of the worst Super Bowl halftime shows ever because not all black people are fucking criminals who crip walk. That just only really fueled gang tensions because bloods. Are okay, like, bro, don't be hyper woke over here. No, nah, I did. I thought it was. Don't I, act like you don't know how to crib walk, bro. I purposely don't. I'm from East You're Oakland. You're lying, bro. I'm from East You're Oakland. You're fucking lying, bro. You literally live on Crenshaw. You literally live on. Are Crenshaw. you doxing me, bro? Or I'm you... just saying, bro. Don't. 
I'm pretty sure your mom knows crips. how to crib walk. I I'm pretty sure Chelsea butts. knows how to crib walk, bro. I mean, I, 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 Chelsea I'll likes, money. Chelsea knows how to crib Chelsea walk. Chelsea likes K pop and can He's a dancer, speak, though. I'm sure she speak knows Korean. How to crib she walk, speaks bro. Korean. I don't know when the fuck she just decided to do. She speaks Korean and a little bit of how Japanese. How the fuck is the Mexican on the dude? The only the Mexican in the Barry family, the only one that knows how to crib walk, bro. That doesn't even make sense. I'm not saying I don't know how to crip walk. I'm saying I don't. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying I don't know how to clown. I choose not to. It's in, I can instinctually do it, but I choose not to because I'm not a gang member. And that's just the code that I was brought up by. You don't crip walk. You're not a crip. You don't Aztec walk. You're not a blood. That's a different set. You don't do the walks because most of these walks are some shit that gang members started and people think it's cool. They don't realize. Like, um, when you do, like, the, the woo... The woo spin, the woo clap, like, those are gangs that started those dances. Pop Smoke was in a gang. Like, those are, so when cats be doing the woo and shit, and they do the spin, like, people get beat up behind that shit. I don't do none of those dances. I don't want that energy on me or near me, so I don't do it. And I got okay, homies who are so, Crips and Bloods, but I, out of respect, because I'm not a street dude, but I will get into some street shit if I have to. Like, the Panthers used to stay at my grandma's house, my grandparents' house back okay. in the day. So if I got to get grimy, I'll go there. Okay. But I don't, I don't actually we get do it. Here. It's it's We get it. I just think that was a, Anyways, shoot. It was point, a corny halftime show. The point that I'm, that I'm trying to make, trying to bring it all together. I get your point. I was just being serious. Okay, for so second. for the Super Bowl halftime show, it says here, according to 2006, they don't pay an appearance fee. They do cover expenses, which Told can you. range from seven to fifteen million, basically. And Told you, Jennifer Lopez was the most expensive ever. So, Told you. But she still sounds get... like a diva. Yeah, some diva shit. You see her outfits, all the outfit changes. I mean, Weekend didn't complain about adding another three million on his shit because he's a Weekend, and you saw his performance. He kind of had to do that. Huh? Yeah. I, I don't. I don't know. If the, I we know the weekend can't sing, bro. I, I don't know if I the weekend does music that you listen to and get depressed and fuck random strangers and hope you don't get STD at day parties in Santa Monica. Not really. He doesn't even do that kind of music anymore. Now nah, it's just like he just alludes but to satanic then, rituals and all his music videos. Now, go watch Sacrifice. Go watch like his last ten music videos. It's all about like selling your soul and shit. He plays up on that trope. Yeah, because he had like how, like he had like two hundred songs before he ever even started working with Drake like that. Yeah, he was already now he's worth way more money Canada. than Drake. Well, because he probably owns all that shit. He probably owns all his masters that shit. He probably he really really released a lot of that shit. House of Balloons was some shit. But um, I don't fuck with a weekend either. A little bit. I don't blame you. I got it's like. Bruno Mars and The Weeknd. I feel it. I don't need to listen to Bruno Mars. I have I have 90s R&B and New Jack Swing. I just go listen to Teddy Riley. I like, I'm like. i an Anderson Pack guy. Every now and then, though, Bruno Mars will do... Like, that song he did with Gucci was cool until they played the fuck out of it. Yeah. Gorilla. And I was just like, I never Gorilla was a great again. song. Gorilla was cool. Certain art, Certain songs, like... You gotta listen to in a pocket, like when you're in a mood to hear it. Sonically, like you can't deny. Yeah, like it's like the lay the lay down with Dram and her. But it's like culturally, do I really need this in my fucking life? No, you don't. It's just on your playlist, and people like, why the fuck is that there? For days, I'm feeling away. It's uh for my pandering efforts to basic people. This is how I pander to basic people. This is my lowest common denominator section of my playlist. This is the lower than lowest common denominator part. Low of my frequency. Playlist. Like this is the middle school dance section of my playlist. Ah! Where everybody just ah! everybody fucks with it. To the ah! windows, to the wall. Yeah, like Ah, oh, ski ski motherfucker. Like, yeah. This is that section. I'm not proud of it, but I listen to it. Very rarely, but when I do, it's like it gets it transitions me from one mood to the next. All it's right. a palate cleanser. Darren Sharper settles sexual assault case with three women. Take your tangent. Still not getting in the Hall of Fame, even though he has Hall of Fame numbers. 
Some... It's weird. We don't look at him the same way we look at LT. But okay, I'm gonna just leave that alone. Well, because Oops, did I say that? Oops, Sharper did I say that? Caught like twenty times. LT got caught like thirty five times. He kept, he How you keep getting caught with underage though? girls saying it's an accident? I didn't know my CT man. Shut the fuck up. But did he get convicted? He got caught. See, Sharper got convicted. No, Sharper's a real predator. And he took a and he took a deal. Sharper's so a real. Can, so it was probably worse. Like shout out to Marcellus Wiley on his take on the Deshaun Watson situation. He's like, you went through a lot of masseuses, bro. You you just need to come out and say you like to fuck after you get a massage, or you like to get a massage and then fuck the person who's giving you the massage, rather than say I didn't sexually assault anybody, but I'm I'm. Unfortunate, like it's sad on how things played out and how people were affected. And some of the most of the women you went to weren't even licensed, so really you were just trying to get your fuck on. But mm. society, society, we can't say that. Like, yeah, people go to massage parlors to fuck, male or female. Like, bath houses exist on the East Coast. I'm just wondering, like, at but we some don't point, talk about that part of society. I'm just wondering at some point, like, does sharper like get in like 50 years from now like no nah, they're never forget. gonna let him they're gonna blacklist him even though he has like s- more interceptions than neon and a bunch of pro bowls and he was a pro bowler with the saints that year he had like nine picks was one of the reasons they won a super bowl that's true and his brother was a pro bowl linebacker jamie sharper I didn't know that was his brother. Yeah, he won I guess the Super Bowl with sense. the Ravens. They actually look really a lot alike. Yep. Wow, I guess I just never knew that. That's crazy. Yep. Yeah, Sharper took the bag with the Texans. Houston and didn't he go to Seattle too? I think that might have been towards the end, but I, I don't remember it's Houston. No, that was Peter Bauer that took the bag from Seattle. No. Uh Jamie Sharper. He, where did he go to Seattle? Where'd he take it back from? He took it back from somewhere, too, and fought. Might have went to Atlanta. I know Edison Hartwell went to Atlanta. That's a wild-ass name. He had, like, 170 tackles the one year at Ray Lewis towards ACL, and then took a bag in Atlanta or some shit. Wow. Apparently, this album is really trash. But he's, like, he's pandering to Jersey clubs. Okay, I'm not from Jersey, so I don't really give a shit. Hey, uh, Peter Bauer only played for the Ravens? Ravens? Yeah. I didn't know that. He was all time sack leader for a long time. So this dude said, nigga dropped an Abercrombie and Fitch playlist. Yeah, someone said, uh, Urban Outfitter is going to have a ball with this. This is hilarious. But yeah, Sharper did end up in his career in um, Seattle. Mm. Damn. Peter Bauer went somewhere else, too, and I think he was just hurt. He probably never played. Yeah. Um. All right. Another one, one you wanted to talk about. Tyreek Hill says Tua is more accurate than Patrick Mahomes. Take your tangent. Shout out to the picture of my nephew just staring blankly off into the abyss as a one-year-old saying, what did I get myself into? Uh, Shout out to Isaiah. Kid is a fucking giant and he's only one years old. Seriously, I'm about to be like, no, nah, you gotta walk. Your big ass gotta walk. You can't walk, you can stand up. You just afraid to take that first step. But no, we're gonna teach you. You're gonna take that first step and take him outside. He'll figure it out. You crawl like a motherfucker. He thinks he's Jeff Hardy, minus the DUIs and the substance abuse. But um Yeah, man, on his podcast. This needed to be said, or I think that's what it's called. Um, it's pretty much what like he he said. Tua doesn't have a bad arm; it's good. Like he has a strong arm, but he's more accurate than Mahomes. And to a point, I can understand his point. Tua is a precision passer. He depends on his ball placement, his anticipation. Mahomes' arm is so dynamic and he is accurate because he didn't start out that way. 
But his arm, his talent is so good, and the rhythm and the scheme that he's in, that his arm will overcompensate for any inaccuracies he may have. Like, some people who say that's a bad shot, like when they did it to Dame Lillard, that's a bad shot. No, it's not a bad shot. I made it. I think it's... Mahomes, that's a bad throw. No, Mahomes, that's a good throw for Mahomes. It's a bad throw if you're like Matt Ryan. I think it's just like this. Mahomes is a... Mahomes is a Steph Curry. He can do it from anywhere, but maybe only in the 80 percentile from all over, 85 percentile. Two is Kyle Lowry. And two is like 95% in the paint and like 90% from mid-range and then like 60% from deep. So I think it's just a different kind of style because, bro, you ain't fooling no one. With those social media videos out here trying to tell us that wobbly ass to, ball, yeah, that, that was wobbly a duck. ass ball you had to slow down for. Bro, I don't throw ducks more like that. Than, Mo, than Mahomes, bro, chill. I got an arm. I, I'll I'll throw hoes. I'll throw that shit downfield. It might not be as accurate, but I'm gonna pick a spot on the sideline where you catch that shit and go out of bounds, or you keep running. But, but either way, man, I mean, props to Hill for standing by his QB and and ultimately you got traded there and got paid. You got to, but also it's and like ultimately whether it works out or not, like. It's not going to be because Tyreek Hill didn't believe in Tua, right? Or at least at face value, you know, in the media, he didn't show him support and love. Yeah. So, because people got to, they'll admit, be able to move on from him if if the Hill and Tua connection doesn't become a thing. Because you got like, two receivers with four two speed and Mike Gusecki with four five speed, and Cedric Wilson is a good slot receiver and some running backs. You should make this offense work. The old line has to like come together. Which that takes time, because they're one of the worst. Lines. And if you can't, that's what Teddy B is for. Nah, that's when I try to go and trade and get a disgruntled QB who don't want to be somewhere no more. Not Baker Mayfield. But like, let's not sleep on the fact that like the past two seasons, like I would try to get Kyler Murray. If like I'm the past two Miami. seasons, bro. Think about what Carolina was last year, right? Yeah. And think about what they were the year before, like the first half of the season, they were competitive with Teddy Bridgewater. The first half of the season last year with Denver, they were competitive, looking like a playoff team. So Teddy Bridgewater can give you enough, and he's never really had weapons like this. I mean, you could say Denver, but half of them were hurt. In and out of the hit, in and out. So, and isn't Teddy from Florida? Yes, he is. When it was a, there was a documentary on his high school and the state championship team that he was on, like everybody had a scholarship. Yeah, that's why Lamar used to say he's the goat. Miami Northwestern legend. If I'm not mistaken, I think with the Miami Northwestern. But yeah, so they got a contingency plan there either way. But I'm just glad, like the whole the whole entire world hasn't turned on Tua at least publicly. Because the narrative has been back and forth on him, like I mean, literally since he got dropped, like literally since he got dropped, even in college, even in college, yeah. They're like, bro, he has a bunch of first round talent around him. He doesn't have a strong arm. Has a strong enough arm, but that that's my thing. Like, Tua has to succeed, or else like apologies and QBs are kind of gonna be fucked. Look at apologies and QBs. Mariota was a flop. Who could potentially be a flop? His little brother is nice at Maryland, though. Um, let's see. How many other Polynesian QBs have come to the league? Not many, but there are some in college, so, you know. This motherfucker said he wanted to get out early and eat, and here's, we're still going to go That was done with my... I was, I was done. I was... Well, I don't know. Sorry, man. I'm just getting hangry. Clearly. All right. Mike McCarthy was fined 100 k for a second year of having two physical OTAs. Take your tangent on that. Cowboy's still going to choke in crunch time, so I don't know what he's doing. They might sign Maybe he shouldn't be having those practices if his linebackers, O-line, running back, receivers, have injury quarterback issues. all have injury issues. I'm just saying, like, 
I'm all for competing. I'm all for being physical. I'm all for playing fucking football when it's time to play fucking football. But that time is not in June. Super Bowls are not one in mandatory. Okay. June is when you refine your technique. J- April and March, that's when you're getting fast. June is when you're kind of breaking down into technique. July is when you start getting more into the playbook. And August is when you start making shit happen. But June, right now, you need to just be refining shit, making it perfect. Everything should be perfect. The physical stuff, you got three months to figure that out, four months to figure that out. Yep. All right. (sighs) Jets offensive tackle, Mikhail Becton, wore a shirt in his media day that said, um, and I quote, big bust in the middle with fat, lazy, injury prone, and out of shape printed all around it for motivation. And he just said, I'm going to make them meet their words when asked about the shirt. So take your tangent on Becton owning his narrative. Respect it. I respect that he's taking that approach because he was looking like an all pro left tackle as a rookie. And they already got another tackle on the other side. So either that dude's going to play. Either he's going to go over the right tackle or the other guy's going to stay at right tackle. But they have bookend tackles. They have Elijah Vera Tucker. They got two other guys on the offensive line. They just signed uh, Lake and Tomlinson. So they have, like, a, an offensive line that should take the next step. The whole team should take the next step. The offense should definitely take the next step because you got you got weapons now. Like, you got receivers. You got guys who don't necessarily. Like, Garrett Wilson is just supposed to be the number one guy. You still got Denzel Mims. So it's like, you know. They should do something. They just have to stay healthy. And I think he can reclaim his past glory. Um, I mean, what was what he, like 6'9", six, 6'8"? Six, yeah. 360. Mm-hmm. He was a massive human being running a 4'8", 40. So, oh, shit. like, people forget, Makai Becton is a freak of nature. All right. Jason Garrett, former Cowboys coach, set to replace Drew Brees on an NBC pregame show. Take your tangent on that. Because Drew Brees was apparently boring. I guess, but... I mean, I didn't mind Drew Brees. Jason Garrett just keeps getting jobs. Amazing. Yeah, none, of these for, none of these former black didn't coaches... Didn't he just get fired as an offensive coordinator? Yeah. Why do people get to Which he never like had been an offensive coordinator and went from QB coach to... Head coach. Head coach. Yeah. So why people get to fail up in society? Everybody else. I just want to know how that. All right. I, I'm interested to hear your take on this next one. Since how no, how come mistake. all these bl- these former black coaches wait? Hold on. Can't get broadcasting jobs. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Richard Sherman takes a deal with Amazon Prime to join their broadcast. Take your tangent on that. Love to see it. I actually want to hear what he has to say, especially as a corner. I fucking disagree. I'm sorry. I mean, he know he's really just trying to latch onto a playoff team. He don't want to play a full season. He's at the end of his career, pretty much. There's plenty of guys who can talk. Love, he can talk. I love Richard Sherman. Like you said, he can talk. He has interesting shit to say. We want to hear what he says. I'd rather he's hear honest. him over Jason Garrett. He's honest. He's true. Like, he's smart. He's articulate. Like, he's on it. And so I, I respect him for that. My whole thing is, though, one, you already have a platform and a profile. Like, why don't you use that? Why don't you make a less, like, ignorant, crazy athlete show, like, without the gimmicks, like, just yeah. straight talk, like, let's really break down this shit. Can't or, tell, man, what he wants to do. Can I finish? Can I finish? I mean, that's what he would say. And then the other part to that is someone, I don't know, he's come up in, as like an adversarial relationship with the media. And so to now just like take the bag from Amazon and just like join their media team, like to me, that's just like backwards. Representation matters. 
Yeah, and that's what I'm saying is you can build your own system. You have the money. You have the Stanford connections. You have everything. You have the platform to influence. Pete, like, you're, you're being he hypocritical. He could do it. He could do it. Pete, you're being hypocritical. Why am I being hypocritical? If somebody offered you $130,000 to go, like, to quit your job right now and go work for, like, Amazon, to do the same thing you're doing, but, like, at a bigger corporation, they're going to pay you $100,000. We've been over this. I wouldn't do it. Do it. To do the same thing you're doing at your current job, not the podcast, your current job, you could go make 130K. You're going to turn that down. Yeah, if it's something that I like fundamentally don't agree with. Well, clearly he fundamentally agrees with it. That's why he's taking the bag. But I'm saying, same circumstance. You agree with it. Some people might see, oh, well, that's kind of an interesting, like, you're you're moving horizontally, not, ver- not vertically or independently. Well, what he he did the NFL draft, like, athlete, you know, Ryan uh, Clark is a media personality. He really much, wasn't much of a talker when he played. I think cats are allowed to transition into that role. And if you're played the game, you should get first dibs. But well, what I'm saying is, like, yeah, that makes sense for a player like a Ryan Clark, who, like you said, wasn't a talker. Like, let's build him up. Let's give him resources. Let's give him a fucking platform. Cool. Great. Richard Sherman has all that shit. So him joining Amazon Prime is maybe profile is maybe about what you said in terms of representation and, and, you know, getting a black media personality analyst, former player in in that prominent position. Sure. Fine. If they're going to give it to Jason Garrett, I'd rather it be Richard Sherman. Sure. But I'm just saying like fundamentally it's corny for me to like, call out the entire institution of media and journalism and all this and like, well, now they're paying me. So now I'm going to join them. That's all Kat's been doing. I know. And and I, I expect more of Richard Sherman, I guess you could say. And like you said, maybe I shouldn't, maybe I shouldn't worry about another man's pockets, another man's wishes and mission. But I'm just saying like, I'm a little disappointed because he could have been the change he wanted to see. You were the chosen one. Exactly. Shout out to Obi Wan Kenobi. All right, and then there was one more I wanted to pull out of my archive from last week, but um, and there's kind of like just a lot of rumors circling around. Anyways, like. I'll I'll just, I'll just close on on a couple of good notes, um, and yeah. then we'll get into the rants. So first off, man, shout out to um, Darius Leonard. He donated a bunch of money to the um, Uvaldi, the Uvaldi families, which I can't say Uvaldi. I'm trying to figure. I'm trying to find how much. Say Uvaldi. Uvaldi. There you go. 15K to help cover cost of caskets for victims of the mass shooting. Because our government's too cowardly to do anything about it. And those cowardly ass police officers, too. And Tom Brady dyed his hair to raise some money for cancer. That was dope. Pink. This guy, because it's like, he's just. He's so dope, but like, you want to hate him, but you just can't. It make like, then you're just being a hater. Like, I think this is how my dad felt about Jordan. Like, as a Laker fan. But Jordan's different. You can hate Jordan. Yeah, because he's fucking wild. Because Kobe, Kobe made you love him. So you could just be like, oh, who gives a fuck about Jordan? Those are mm, dimes. I don't know about that. There's a lot of yeah, people they're, they're outside of LA. Fan boys. They're Jordan fanboys. There's a fan lot boys. of people outside of LA in they're California Jordan that fan boys. don't fuck with Kobe. That's, I mean, people in Colorado still love Kobe. That's how fucking Kobe Kobe is. Understand that Kobe's fucking in China. Kobe's bigger in China than Jordan ever was. 
All right, so last one. Jordan Fields was at a Wrigley Field. He hit a bunch of dingers and and cranking them in the stands. And that was last week. This week, Golden Tate made his minor league debut in the West Coast League. Former Seahawk, Lion, eleven years, Giants. eleven years in the league. Hopefully, Blitnikoff winner. Hopefully, he didn't fuck any pitchers' wives. But I digress. I mean, hopefully you can get beat up by anybody. So take your attention on uh, football players playing other sports in this time. I mean, they've been doing it. Golden Tate was like how it was like a touted baseball prospect in college. A lot of these guys could play in the sports, but football is what you dedicate your whole life to. Even though you can make more money in baseball, but there's no guarantee you're going to make it to the major leagues. Yeah, and the other thing is, I, baseball's a lot more institutional and tedious. A lot more like somebody like Tim Tebow could just take a spot from you that he that he doesn't deserve. There are a lot. Yeah, I said it. Would say, I don't know, man. I feel like. I don't know. Like I Tennessee feel like, went I feel 50, like there's more. I feel like there's more Del Rios in baseball, but I don't well, know. Baseball is inherently I racist. We wrong. already know that. But I could be wrong because it's like football. There's more people, so. But I'd say, ratio wise, it probably breaks down a lot more Del Rios. How about that? Baseball brought in Latino immigrants with African backgrounds to try to replace American baseball players. Not to Sean Thomas. He already did a whole spiel on black players and baseball and how MLB went away from it. There are black dudes playing hockey now. Black people can play every sport on the planet. And when we get good enough, we usually take it over. All right, so go ahead. Let's get to the rents. But, you know, some sport, poverty is kind of bred into a society. It's not a natural thing. Poverty is a creation, not a, oh, you fucked up and didn't work hard enough. Poverty's not natural, but um. Anyway, I mean, so I'm I'm getting in my gym routine. I'm slowly. At, I'm mostly focusing on cardio, back exercises, upper body like arms, um, stretching, getting my quads and my hamstrings right. It's it's a slow progression. All I'm hearing is you're skipping leg day. That's all. No, I I'm not skipping. About. No, I do cardio every day. Not I'm building up to doing squats, but like I can't do like a good one right now. Like I gotta like get I gotta like stretch I gotta stretch more to where my hamstrings and glutes and all that stuff is like loose to where I can do a proper squat and then eventually I can start adding heavier weight and get back to what I was squatting. So I'm taking the slow approach to that. Like that's long term. Like by the end of the year, I'm going to be able to be squatting four plates with like perfect technique. Because I started, I've only been benching for like two weeks, and I'm already doing sets of ten with like two two o five, which is like a plate and a thirty five. I know how much two o five is. People who don't know what a plate thirty five is don't know that though, Pete. So pretty much, like I'm building I my. I can't relate. I can do two plates, nigga. Shut I've been up. bitching two plates since I was 14. Yeah, me too. Uh, I can't I can't second that, sir. I Dog, can't co-sign that. The most I hit like 3:30 at CSUN. What the fuck are you talking about? I never saw it. You weren't there. I've only seen you lift once and it was not good. So, cuz I was I, injured. That's all I have to call. I was lifting injured allegedly, and I was grossly out of shape. Allegedly. Like, what the f- what the fuck are you? Shut up, bro. Allegedly. I have too many people who can confirm my Allegedly. weight room feats in high school. You get the fuck out of You're here. You're talking about half a decade ago. You're almost okay. doubled this since then. Okay. And at You're CSUN, closer to doubling at that CSUN, than not. I was, I was getting spotted benching 330. I can literally tell you who was there. I was doing 330. Again. I'm not I was two se- I'm I was two seventy say- at CSUN. I'm not that saying that first semester. What the I'm fuck not you saying t- it didn't happen. I'm just saying I can't confirm it. Andrew can it. confirm it. Multiple people can again, confirm I'm again, strong as fuck. 
Again. I'm just out of shape, but I'm Again. getting back in shape. I'm I losing the gut. It. I ain't seen it. So until I see it. Fuck out of here, bro. I got a buddy it, pass. I you want to come to 24? Of course I want to come to 24. We got whirlpools, dog. Just say I'm off Saturday. We can go. And then we'll go hit it Saturday. I don't know. I'm busy. Bitch. See? See? I'm off Thursday and Saturday, bro. Pick a day. And do Saturday. I have a prior commitment. Well, you can pick a day. I'm off Thursday and Saturday. What you want to do? I'm going to have my know? phone fixed by tomorrow, hopefully. Oh, I haven't even free weighted in like six months. I just wish 24-Hour Fitness would bring back weight clamps. That's not okay, 24-Hour Fitness. Why don't they have weight clamps? They don't fucking have any weight clamps anywhere. Why don't they have weight clamps? I don't understand. They what the people fuck? People still them, huh? That's no, I guess I think the pandemic, they just don't have any weight clamps at that 24. Nah, somebody stole it, bro. Because that's how... You another, stole all the another, weight clamps? That's how another 24 I went to was like... How do you steal all the weight clamps in a two-story gym? people still fucking... Cla- bro. Because you need them. Think about it. Somebody, imagine if somebody stole all the back... The backs of a woman's earrings. Bro, but think about... Think about how many clamps went missing. You know how many weight clamps you have to steal? That's an inside job. Like, dog, like... Well, what, what is there more in like the fucking purgatory of universes? Like weight single clamps. socks or weight clamps? Like <sighs> that's good. Ties what? are ties up there. Like dog, like, baby ooh, socks are definitely. Who up there. has all these fucking weight clamps, bro? I want to know. <laughs> Does someone who just have the- a fucking private gym? Like in between the universes that we don't even fucking know. Is like, like on some fucking? Is that what like Epstein Zeus, is? Is Zeus Epstein eats fucking weight clamps? Like, is that what's going on? Like, it's like the just... Cookie Monster, like a troll. Like you just fucking hoard weight clamps, <laughs> dog. I'm tired of benching fucking whatever weight, and then the shit slides off naturally because of the way the bench press is set up on a slope. Because some idiot designer doesn't realize you shouldn't have a bench press on a fucking sloped floor. That's probably a bad idea, my guy. Kind of need a flat surface, or as flat as you can get. And All right, just, man. So go yeah. ahead, finish your answer. Right. But yeah, like it's very therapeutic for me. Um, just kind of taking my time through this weight loss journey. There's a reason why I want to say I'm just, I'm healing. Yeah, I don't have much either this week. I'll just say, um, I think the only more thing more blasphemous about All American than Spencer. Spencer's routes is the fact that his girlfriend just like magically broke into journalism like straight out of high school. And I was like, <laughs> okay. No one believes that. Okay. Well, where does this happen? Okay. But yeah, and and I mean I haven't finished this latest season. I mean, Chrissy's the only person I can think of who actually did something like that. Even I that took a lot of fucking work. I haven't finished this latest season. But essentially, like, the whole thing is, like, she did this podcast and then parlayed that into an internship over the summer. And then then now she's, like, a, like, admin at the quote-unquote Tribune, which I guess, I'm not sure if it's the Sentinel supposed to be or, like, the L.A. Times, whatever, somewhere in that range. Fake L.A. newspaper. But, yeah, so she breaks into that, and now she's, like, I want to report I had this great podcast But they just want to use me for research And they just want to uh, I'm like um, That's what is this, I was like uh, Is this CW show going to touch on the fact That you're only able to do that Because your mom's a lawyer And your dad's a professional coach And former football player So you have the privilege of being able to take those internships Or like are we just going to And they probably pulled that. some strings for you Ding, or are we ding, just ding, gonna ding, ding, graze ding. over that and like you totally graze over it? Well, I mean, technically part of her podcast was her mom was the DA, so like she like low key. So you're the cops. Your whole family is the cops. Well, that was the whole th- that was the whole part of the season was basically they were going back and forth on prosecuting the cops because DAs don't prosecute cops. Because they're but partners. She's a white woman. And she has black kids, so it was a fucking five episode Dragon Ball Z build up. But essentially, <laughs> the fucking daughter ends up dropping the scoop on her podcast, like, and just fucking unleash this whole like social uprising. And then eventually, 
basically backed her mom into a, a corner of prosecuting the police, which got her fired and damn near disbarred. Because, again, DAs don't p- prosecute police. Because they work together. They're partners. DAs are cops, in case y'all didn't so, know. They're literal cops. They just have, they don't carry guns. So, yeah, again, there's some um, journalistic uh, ethics and fact-checking that could have went into that CW and Warner Media. I'm just saying, but, hey. Warner Media is not show. looking too great right now. It's a fucking show, so I'll just let it let you, let y'all have your moment, but I'm just think we should put that out there that like hey media we should stop making it look like it's so easy to get into media because it's nearly impossible it's really fucking not and especially like unless you come as i'm a minority you can pit me out for diversity unless you go that route or they tell most chicks you can't have your hair cut a certain length let's talk about the the negative body the lack of body well, positivity well, we're, we're, in moving, media. we're we're moving past some of that stuff but but uh, there's some a lot of it is who still can't they still have to cut their hair, they still have to cut their hair, which is pretty fucked not, up. Not as much, it. not as much. There's not less like, of that. There's less of that now. Yeah, there's but. less of it, but there's still some people who prefer uh, a non-white person to um, not have locks. That's a real thing. Yeah, like but, uh, the, certain hairstyles are discriminated against, which is weird. Yeah, but, but we're moving past. A lot of that. We've like a lot of people have talked about that now. Like it's pretty common knowledge. Like, well, who do you give credit? People are who, trying to. Who do you give credit to for that? I don't give the older generations credit for that. Who do you give the credit to? I just want to know your locks is um, acceptable. No, just like different hairstyles and like who do you give? What generation do you give credit to for stopping that stigma of you have to look a certain way to be on TV? Me. I would say Gen Z. Really. It was already happening. Yeah. Like it was like I said, millennials. Like it was already, it, off. It, it was already happening. Like people were talking about like, hey, I've been in news. They want me to fucking uh, straighten my hair. They want me to, you know, not talk in my natural dialect, which is a nice way of saying they don't want me to use slang. Like they no, they want you to. They sound want me like to code switch. Person. They want me to code switch. Would well, you sound like a white person? They want me to code switch. They want me to change my hair. They want me to lose weight. They want me to do all these things. So, like those conversations were already happening, and they were getting louder. Like more journalists were going on the record, writing comms about it, talking about it actively. Like, yeah, I had to negotiate. Like LZ talked a lot about it. Like different people just talked about it. But then the pandemic. I was like, okay, we're not just talking about it. Now people are on fucking Actionable air, items. are on fucking air in their fucking head wraps. They're fucking, you know, wearing sweats. They're wearing fucking sweaters. They're like comfortable themselves. Like, and so that accelerated it. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know who you give credit to. I don't know if there's a single figure you can really give credit to. I'm giving the credit to millennials and Gen Z because they don't give a fuck. Because it was not that long ago that AI and Michael Vig went through some shit for We're deep enough. But I'm saying millennials, we saw that and we're like, we're not letting that shit fly. We'll fight that. Like, we'll fight you for that in the street. We may lose a couple battles, but we'll fight that. Gen Z's like... Hey, fuck y'all. We just won't apply. And then you guys are going to go out of business because you don't have any young labor to um, exploit. We'll just get money off TikTok and laugh in your face. We'll do better journalism on TikTok than you do at your fucking multi-million dollar studio. Don't get me started, bro. This show's ending. I know, but I'm just saying, like, I'm saying the attitude. The attitude of no, that shit's not okay. Like, I got to give Gen Z their props. Like I gave them shit for eating Tide Pods and, and, uh, and snitching gen, on themselves. A Gen Zer would have got me my TikTok plan by now, but whatever. Hey man, Back shut gross. the fuck up. First well, of all, you brought it up. You brought it up. You made I it personal. You're the making show it personal. Go eat. I want to go all eat I too. Wanted to do. I mean, I just, all right, cool. All right, I remember that. All and right, you got well, me in trouble with my mom over a fucking candy bar I didn't eat because I wasn't physically there to eat it. But yeah, thanks, asshole. Musty ass Tars. He brought the candy bar here, Diane. I saw him I break did it, it out of his backpack. I wasn't even. I, I don't even see you, but once a week. Backpack. He brought. He brought it. I only he see you once a week. 
I was like, nah, I'm good. She was like, I brought her off this black kid. He was trying to sell candy. You know those like the, all the candy bars that make you sell. Nobody wants those. The good, they're good. They're fire though, but nobody wants them. I don't agree. You don't go out of your way to get the peanut. I don't butter. agree. The peanut butter ones are fire. The rightful place for those candy bars is in the fridge. Like, yeah, the only place for a year. The only and place. then when you have no other sweets available, you eat them. Like you're tapped out of ice cream, you're tapped out of like miscellaneous Eastern Halloween candy, and you're just like, well. Look, there's this chocolate bar here. Where's our chocolate? I mean, it won't expire when you put it in the freezer. All right, but yeah, thanks for listening to us. This is Touchdowns and Tangents. You can catch this show here on touchdownsandtangents.com, your favorite podcast at Squad Affiliates, FBC Radio, TDs underscore tangents on Twitter and Instagram. Gage with us. Fuck with us. Thank you. We're out. Peace. Peace.